could you do if I say how to do? Could you be more cliche? Actually, I could. Help me, help me. Hello and welcome to the customer service line of an unnamed intergalactic travel agency responsible for this week's post called How to Ask for Help. How may I help you? Will help? I can't help you. But fear not, the How to Ask for Help post can help if you're an alien. I'm an alien! Travelling to Earth and requiring general how to get about help. Help. Because this week's post was a guide for touristing aliens visiting our fair planet and requiring assistance in general uh, touristing activities and uh, beignet procurement. Beignet? Beignets, of course, being the absolute pinnacle of human engineering triumphs when it comes to our civilization. But I knew I had to level up to beignets. Imho. That means, in my humble opinion, which is ancient terminology. You're old. LOL. The How to Ask for Help guide is just one of the many supplementary materials that are offered by this travel agency to help aliens uh, travelling to Earth in their human body, which, you know, they don't quite know how to use because it's very different from the globulous orb they normally are. You're an alien! Or something. Because in this world that I created, you would be issued a rental human body by which to tourist with while on Earth. It's called sightseeing. And I figured the most pressing question you would have when issued the human body, the holy grail of touristing questions, and it is, where is the toilet? Weird human bodies with the waste evacuation duties. 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 Ha <laughs> ha, duty. Ick. So why did I write a how to ask for help guide for aliens? I'm an alien. What brought that on? Well, humans, and I realise I'm casting a very broad brush here, so I'll refine that a little. Some humans have a lot of trouble asking for help. I don't need your help. We're talking your uh, independent types, your shy types, your introverts, your uh, stubborn folk. I refuse to ask out of spite. And people who, you know, just don't want to cause any fuss or be any trouble. You know who has no trouble asking for help? Oh, who? People stuck on desert islands. Our plan is to use all this duct tape we've got to make a giant SOS signal. That's how this all started. I read this story about three fishermen who got stuck on a desert island in Micronesia after the skiff they were piloting lost engines and uh, they got stranded on this island. These intrepid mariners spelled out the word help in palm fronds on the beach, which was spotted by a Navy reconnaissance aircraft. They were then rescued by the US Coast Guard. Coast Guard reserves. After being stranded for one week. Now writing help or SOS. Whatever happened to our love? On a beach in palm fronds or coconuts or rocks or aeroplane fuselage, I don't know, whatever's at hand. This is what's known as a TV trope. And the TV trope is a character stranded on a deserted island or a desert builds a message with sticks. We are going to build a sign. And or stones. A, a massive sign along the beach. For a passing plane. So that way if a plane flies over or a, a satellite takes pictures from up there. To see. We want to make damn sure that they know we're here. It usually reads help, although. So when you SOS is common as well. So that's the TV trope. Okay, done. But it's also what's known as a truth in television trope because it actually works. There are numerous news stories. Couple rescued from Desert Island after writing SOS. Of people being saved just by writing the word help or SOS on a beach or in the sand or wherever the hell they are. Writing the word help in huge letters in the sand is now officially a movie cliche that works. And it gets spotted from the air. Success! There are no stories of it not working, 
because presumably those people are dead. Way to go dark. Eh, there are no stats because there are no stats. Know what I mean? We're alive. They're dead. So that's beach help. Sidebar. For the header this week, I used uh, the figures from that little known garage band called the... Uh, Beatles to spell out help over the picture of a sandy beach. Here's a fun fact that I learned when I was younger, so much younger than today. A fact that I will share with you now. On the cover of the Beatles album Help, the lads from Liverpool spell out using their bodies and the language of flag semaphores the word help. Or do they? They do not. The photographer, Robert Freeman, did not like the way it looked when it actually spelled out help. So for aesthetic and visually pleasing reasons, he changed it. And I quote, I had the idea of semaphore spelling out the letters help. But when we came to do the shot, the arrangement of the arms with those letters didn't look good. So we decided to improvise and ended up with the best graphic positioning of the arms. End quote. So if it doesn't say help, what do it say? Well, that depends on if you get the UK cover or the US cover. Confused yet? For the UK version, which was issued by Parlophone, it spells out N-U-J-V, a.k.a. gibberish. While the US release, which was put out by Capitol Records, they rearranged the formation of the boys, and it says N-V-U-J. More gibberish! They rearranged the lads so that Paul's left hand could point at the Capitol Records logo. Advertising! Cool. Okay, let's get off this subject. Back to the post. When I initially came up with the idea of writing a uh, guide for how to ask for help, it wasn't for aliens. It was to be for humans. Hello, I'm a human. I wanted to call it the Common Sense Guide because my mum used to have this cookbook called the CWA Common Sense Cookery Book. Um, the CWA, of course, being the Country Women's Association of Australia. Uh, and now I'm off track again. But Common Sense, because, you know, everyone knows what common sense means. But also, I wanted to use the five senses as a sort of way of remembering the different ways that you could ask for help. So sight would be spell it out, like in palm fronds on a beach. Sound would be sound it out, literally ask for help, use your voice. And then I thought, this is too serious. What we need here is some levity. The whole where is the toilet part of it. What's toilet? That was just going to be one line. For the, the human guide, like, you you know, there's important reasons to ask for help and it's not just, where's the toilet? Duty! And that's how I ended up making it be for aliens. Because I figured if you were an alien and you came to Earth and you'd rented a human body by which to have your uh, touristing experience, you'd probably want some instructions on how to use that body. And more than that, if one of the tasks is to evacuate waste from it, you'd want to be able to ask, Where is the nearest toilet? And that kind of became a through line for the piece. All scenarios using the five senses would ultimately have a where is the toilet component attached. For some reason, I gave aliens a side mission of the beignet procurement. Never beignet. <laughs> I'm not really sure why I did that. That's neither here nor there. But um, I can tell you, I went to uh, St. St. Louis, St. Louis once, and there's only two things I remember about that trip. Well, three if you include the arch thing. Um, Ted Drew's frozen custard. Ugh. And beignets. Oh my God, I had no idea what a beignet was. And then my friend Olivia purchased three beignets for me. They come in threes for some reason. My brain exploded in a cloud of powdered sugar. Just want to get some beignets with you. I tell you, it's a triumph of human pastry uh, engineering. It's also neither here nor there. Now, the advantage of having this guide come from an unnamed intergalactic travel agency <laughs> is that none of the information in it has to be correct. It's just made up. It's as though they've created this guide based on hundreds of alien Yelp reviews about visits to Earth. And that's fine because that gives me a lot of latitude to just go nuts and make shit up, which I did. He's make-believe. And so we have advanced aliens who have booked their travel to Earth, who have rented a human body for the trip and don't quite know how to use it. 
The guide provides a common sense way to remember different scenarios by which to ask for help using the five human senses. Sound it out, sound. Spell it out, sight. Ask a flavour, taste. Feel it out, touch. And sniff it out, smell. Easy peasy. Now there's a section in the piece where I ask quite haughtily why superior aliens might even need to ask for help. Like, why would, why? We, the carriers of the universal tongue tone, whatever that is. I will confess I was somewhat channeling the tears in the rain speech from uh, Blade Runner. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion when I was thinking of that section. Again, that's a tangent. We don't need to talk about that. And now I want to go watch Blade Runner. I might do that this afternoon. Anyway, sidetracked. I say, hail Tutor quite a bit in the piece. You might be wondering, who is Tutor? I don't know, but I can tell you I would watch a three hour Ridley Scott movie about her. No, you wouldn't. Now, by the time we get to the end of the universal common sense guide to how to ask for help, I've presented numerous suggestions for how an alien in an unfamiliar body on an unfamiliar planet using the five human senses, all extra senses have been deactivated for this trip, how they can ask for help. Help computer. The last sense that I presented to them was sound. Sound it out. Talk. Use your voice. Simply ask for help. A little help. Because although it is written as a humorous piece that's for aliens and teaches them how to ask for help, I wanted it to be more universal in that it kind of applied to everyone. Little help. If you need help, just ask. Little help here. By asking, you may find a toilet in your time of need. But it may also, not to be too dramatic, save your life. We could all use a little bit of help. And now, allow me to read to you, at the start of your voyage, the intro to the Universal Common Sense Guide to How to Ask for Help. <clears throat> Travellers of time and space, of existence walking through the tremulous star garden and night seas, shooting cosmically in proud stewardship of the ancient repository, specks of defiant light, dream dusts alighting from the cosmos curtains, existing on the plane of unknowing, beings of the being of, thank you for booking your travel through us. Hail Tuta! Good voyage. That's not part of the guide, that's just me. Also, word to the wise, do not shit in your human rental suit or you'll lose the deposit. See you next week.